Hello, in this video I will show you how to write unit tests in Python. First I will show you how to install a test runner and how to run the test. And next we will talk about how to write the unit test, what is the syntax, uh, and more importantly we will talk about the ingredients of a test. Typically we have a descriptive test method name and we arrange our code in uh, this triple A, arrange act assert, and we have a demonstration uh, with some simple examples, for example, how to test a function that called add that takes in two arguments and returns the number two. And uh, in data science workflows, we work a lot with data frames. So I will show you also how you can write unit tests to um, assert on transformations to this data frame. In this example, we'll just multiply all the values in all the columns by 10. Uh, as a simple example um, to show you the syntax of asserting on uh, data transformations on data frames. If you haven't already done so, you can uh, clone this repository called cleancode.ml and there you will find instructions on, uh, for a refactoring exercise. Right now, we're just going to activate our, virt our virtual environment. Here it is. And the t test dependencies that we care about in this video is nose uh, for our test runner and nose watch, which is a dependency that helps us uh, run the test in watch mode, and red nose, which is a dependency that helps us give us some color to our output, uh, green if everything is okay, and red if it's um, uh, something is failing. So this is a big part of the joy of uh, writing tests is to see green. Uh, so I that's why I installed this um, red nose so they can have colorized outputs. Um, at some point, once you start doing a lot of TDD and unit testing. Uh, this dopamine rush is uh, absolutely a part of the, the joy of writing tests. So once we've activated our virtual environment, the next thing we're going to do is to run the tests. I already have some uh, demo tests in this repo, but in the next section we are going to write our first test. So how do we write a unit test in Python? First we'll create a, a test file. I'm going to call it test demo. As a convention, we will prefix the pack, uh, the module, our module, with the word uh, test underscore. So later, I'll create a module called demo.py. And here, we're going to import the built-in uh, unit test module and define a test case, test class. And as a convention, again, we uh, title case the name of this file. And we're going to extend uh, the test case class. And I will show you why. Let's say test one should equal one as a dummy test. So now we extend this test case class so that we can get all of uh, we can inherit all of these uh, assertion methods. So we're gonna use assert equals, and as a dummy, just to see that everything is working, I'm just gonna assert that one is equals to one. And yeah, there's the test syntax. And now let's have a more realistic case. Just now we talked about our function add. So we're going to write a test to assert that when I get, call this function with two numbers, I'm going to get two. So the ingredient, ingredient of a test case, number one, we need a descriptive test method name. So I'm going to say test uh, add one and one should equal two. And so I'm going to assert that first, uh, as a convention, I typically put um, the expectation first and then the actual value. And now I'm going to give you a little preview on what is test-driven development. So test-driven development is the idea that you write your test first and let it fail, and you let the test drive the design or implementation of this function. So we're going to incrementally follow these errors until and fix it one by one until we get uh, a working function called add. First of all, it's saying that add is not defined. So I'm going to define that in my module called demo. We're going to define a function called add. And for now, let's just do nothing. And it's still complaining add is not defined. That's because I haven't imported it in our test. And now we got a new error message. It says that add uh, were given two, was given two arguments, but now it's taking none. So we're going to fix that by saying, okay, now I'm expecting to receive two numbers. 
And now we got a new uh, error message saying that, hey, two is not equals to none. So that's because we are now not returning anything. So we're expecting two and we passed one and one. So the simplest fix would be to return one plus one. And now the test is passing. So typically a function would uh, be more com complicated and we would have more test cases to um, assert on the different uh, behavior of the function. But just to keep this demo simple, um, I will stop here. But typically we will write more test case uh, to specify what the function should do and then incrementally grow the function to pass all the test cases. Alright, so now let's um, talk about how we can assert on a data frame. And then later we'll talk about the arrange act assert style of arranging our unit test. So imagine we have a function that takes a data frame and returns a data frame with uh, all of the columns multiplied by 10. So how will we test that, right? So first I'm going to write the test. So def test uh, multiply by 10 should re uh, give a data frame with values multiplied by 10. All right. For asserting data frames, we're going to use pandas. Pandas testing uh, package has these uh, assertion methods that we can use for asserting data frames and asserting on panda series. So we're going to use this instead of the built-in uh, assert equal. The reason is that now we can have more options for conf co configuring how we want to assert the data frame. Do we want to check that the data type is uh, the same? Do we want to check that? Uh, do we want to check less precise numbers? For example, your values might be you know to twentieth decimal places, and yeah. So this function, this uh, assertion function, lets us configure how we want to assert on our data frames. Again, it's the same thing. We put in our expected, and we put in our actual data frame. So this is where we come into this uh, arrange act a style of writing our unit test. So what is the input to our function? So we, we might have a function called multiply by 10, which takes in a data frame. So let's arrange and set up our first data frame. So it, we're going to create a data frame. And let's just say it has a, this is where we think about what is the input to our function and what we are going to expect. So let's just say it has a, a column, a column one and has some values, one, two, three. And this is enough for now. So we're going to arrange uh, the input, and we're going to specify our expectation. So we are going to expect a data frame, which has the same number of columns, but this time the values are multiplied by 10. OK, and now it's complaining that I don't have PD, so I'm going to import uh, pandas as pd, and that's coming from here. Um, we've done the arrange, we've, now we're going to do the act. So the act is the invocation of your function. So I might do something like this. So this is the act, uh, the act, actual uh, act that this test is uh, asserting on. And so now let's fix this. Uh, multiply by 10 is not defined. So we can go here, define a function called multiply by 10. We know it takes in a data frame. And for now, let's just do nothing. OK, so it's still again saying it's not defined. That's because we haven't imported it. Now we import it. And that's great. So now it's expecting to see a data frame, but it found none. That's because we haven't returned anything. And so let's just do the simplest thing and return the original data frame without any transformation. And we see that we got we are expecting on the left uh, 10, 20, 30, but we got 1, 2, 3. Left is this, we got we are expecting 10, 20, 30, and we got 1, 2, 3. So let's think, what is the most simple thing we can do to pass this test? So I might think, okay, I have right now just one column. So I might say, um, what are the columns, right? So let's see. Uh, df.columns 
and I'm trying to say for each series, uh, go and uh, multiply it by 10. So the new column value is going to be equal to the original multiplied by 10. And that's enough to satisfy the test run. To summarize a few things here, first we arrange our uh, test in this arrange act assert. This is a nice way to um, tell our readers uh, what is happening. So over time, these comments shouldn't be there. But the white space denotes uh, to your team that, hey, this is the arrangement, this is set up. This is what is actually happening. This is the act. And then this is the assertion. So as a convention, this helps us to make our test more readable as well. Yeah, and another thing we learned is how to assert on data frames. We can use this function from uh, pandas.testing mo module. The last thing I want to talk about is why we need a descriptive test name. That's because when the test fails, this is the first thing that you're going to see. For example, let's uh, intentionally or unintentionally break the behavior. So this test method says test multiplied by 10. So we know, okay, the multiplied by 10 function. Um, we know what to expect. We, should, we are expecting that we have a data frame multiplied by 10. Just by reading that, we know that, okay, we are expecting values multiplied by 10. And now instead of getting this, we are getting something else. So immediately that gives us um, um, feedback into where it's gone wrong and what has gone wrong. Imagine if it was something uh, less, less specific, let's say test uh, multiply, something like that. It's very vague. So again, your search space is, is much larger, larger. You don't know where in the code base it's gone wrong. You don't know uh, what you were expecting. And that's it. We've learned how to write a unit test in Python. We've learned how to arrange our tests. We need a descriptive test method name. We arrange act assert. And we have um, learned how to assert on a data frame.